In this episode, Golden and I discuss the short-lived 2014 to 2015 TV series, Constantine, Full Speed Ahead. Welcome to the Omega Beam number 73. I'm your host, Oren Merton. I hope you're all holding up well and staying safe and healthy. So if you're like us, being at home more means more time to catch up on all those shows that you'd meant to watch back in the day, but you know, something came up or you didn't get to catch it, all that kind of thing. Well, I really loved Constantine. Golden hadn't seen it, but wanted to, but you know, she just didn't get to it. So we decided now's a good time as any. It's actually streaming on a couple different channels here in the USA. So we gave it a watch in her case, rewatch in my case. There's modest spoilers as with all of our TV stuff. So let's get to it. I am here with Golden to talk about a old and defunct show. This is like a five or six year old show, but through the, the, uh, the great majesty of streaming it even though it's gone it is not forgotten i'm talking about constantine which got one mid-season sort of order of 13 episodes for nbc back in the day 2014 2015 and then died though constantine himself is still alive in the arrowverse yeah he's kind of hard to kill Constantine is very hard to kill, absolutely. So I'd been talking up this series to you. I watched it when it was first on, and you hadn't seen it. Yeah. And so I, I more or less uh, cajoled you into watching the 13 episodes. Well, so, you didn't need to cajole me into watching it. I just never caught it when it was on originally. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's tough when, when a show is sort of there, and you know it's gone after a certain point, and there's so much other stuff that's still going it can make you feel like, okay, well, I'll, I'll catch up with that sometime. But, you know, there's this stuff that's currently going, and I want to be current with that. But, well, you know, we all have a lot of time on our hands these days. So, Constantine it was. And how did you like him? I thought it was very good. I very much enjoyed it. I know that you're a fan of Supernatural. I, I Even Supernatural, I got in too late. Mm -hmm. um, by day, I'm a teacher. And um, a couple of years back, I decided I was going to watch Supernatural. So after school each day, I'd start to, when I was you know, grading papers, cleaning up my classroom, getting things ready, I literally did, I don't know how many seasons in one school year, mm -hmm. but I think I was caught up by the end of the year. <laughs> it's a lot of seasons. Yeah, no, it, it was a lot, but it was very enjoyable. There's a lot of parallel kind of setups between the two they've both got their angels they yeah. both got their demons uh they definitely you know, have their the supernatural boys aren't usually the ones that are is into magic or the magic's running through them as much as mm -hmm. constantine not that they're not capable of doing their own thing but it is it is a very similar genre. Yeah, I know you and I have talked about it. I don't know if I've mentioned it on a previous episode, but the uh, the, sh the showrunners, the creators of, of Supernatural said that originally they pitched a Constantine TV show to Warner Brothers, but they were rejected. And so they took their pitch and they rewrote it and recreated their show from their initial idea of, well, why don't we use John Constantine? And uh, you haven't watched Supernatural. Only episodes here and there, not the whole series. But, um, no, I mean, they've done a really good job with it, and it's, I haven't watched any of the current season, mm -hmm. but I look forward to when it actually gets to Netflix and I get to get caught up on the last season. Yeah. Um, when we started watching Constantine, you were like, yeah, this, this one actress in the very first episode, just, she didn't work out. And... I was like, wow, it's it's interesting because I am a fan of Lucy Griffiths. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed her in Robin Hood. I've enjoyed her in other things I've seen her in. And I think, yeah, I get how she just wasn't the right feel for this. But then I also just, I'm not sure what it is about the Zed character. Mm -hmm. Angelica Celaya is her name. 
the actress? Um, it just, it also, to me, it wasn't really, it was never an intimate relationship in terms of friendship mm-hmm. or just community between her and Constantine for me. Like, there is with with Chaz, though. Yeah, yeah. With Chaz and Constantine, there's this really tight connection that I never really even saw it ever forming between them and Zed. It was interesting. I saw Constantine, um, I guess it would have been uh, 2013 or 20, may have been, it may have been 2014, at Comic-Con, uh, Warner Brothers had a big deal where Arrow had, w- w- had already been on for a while and um, it had already made itself a little bit of a of a following, and they had a night of of Warner Brothers TV, and sort of uh, Stephen Amell was the master of ceremonies, and the shows that were airing that fall, which was, I believe, the two shows they were highlighting were Flash and Lucifer, and then at the very end, as like a bonus, they just played the Constantine uh, pilot as well. And the general sense was, this is a great show. The the sense was, uh, Matt Ryan was amazing. I mean, all of us, we were just like, okay, this guy really is the guy right out of the comics. I mean, if if the the actual comic character, who is written by some of the greatest British comic writers that there ever were, Alan Moore and Neil, Neil Gaiman and... And uh, I think um, Grant Morrison and just, just he had, th- there was something just so British about him and his attitude and the way he approached magic and tragic as well. I mean, he was a hero, but he was a, a, a tragic hero, and, mm-hmm. but he refused to wallow in the tragedy that was his life. He was very aggressive about it. And Matt Ryan just captured captured it all. Oh, yeah. No, there's there's no... No argument there as to, I'm not as familiar with the Constantine from the comics, Mm -hmm. but I really think that not only in the Constantine, Mm -hmm. but his character just adds a lot to Legends of Tomorrow as well. Absolutely. So we loved Matt Ryan. um, And what was interesting was we saw the pilot after we saw the cast. The cast came out to talk about the series. And what was interesting is Angelica came out and she's like, yeah, you're not going to see me in this episode because behind the scenes, they'd already decided that the, the woman who was in the pilot was not going to be in the rest of the show. So they brought Angelica to, as part of the cast of the show, though the, the pilot we got to see, she wasn't in for a second. Mm Mm-hmm. So that was kind of weird. Um, we watched it, and, you know, it's not like I talked to a ton of people, but in general, I don't think, l- like you said, I-, I don't think she just fit. I mean, it wasn't that we didn't like her, the actress. Lucy Griffiths. Uh, Lu- Lu- yeah, thank you. Lucy Griffiths. We didn't dislike her. It just seemed like she was in a different show. And I remember, you know, we watched the last episode last night, mm-hmm. and I just, at the first, man, the first time Manny shows up last night, I was just like, I just, I have not liked that character from day one. Mm-hmm. I know this is supposed to be the angel. I know that this is supposed to be on the good side. I just have not liked his character from day one. Just, there's something about him that I just... Couldn't, I don't know if it was, you know, Harold Perrineau uh, or the actual character, but I just didn't like him. And I understood why by the end of the episode. Yeah, I think it's both. I think it's a combination that you probably just didn't connect with the actor. But also, I think, um, you know, I know that in some cases you, you talk to the creators, you talk to the actor, and they're told, you know, the actor says, I didn't know the arc my character was on. You know, and the creators then say, well, we didn't want him to know. We didn't want her to know because we wanted it to be a surprise. We didn't want them to be acting as if, oh, I know this thing's going to happen. And from the very first moment you see Manny, you think, 
that his, like you said, his angelicness doesn't jibe with how he's presenting himself. And, okay, I'm going to jump back to Supernatural for a Mm -hmm. minute. There are plenty of times in Supernatural that the angels just don't seem to be doing the angelic thing or Mm -hmm. making the angelic choice. But you kind of you know where they you know where they are right and even when you don't you still kind of what you want to trust them right and i just you never wanted i never to trust wanted to manny. trust manny yeah no i i get that i get that i did like the character but i i see all of of your criticisms because they i i'm certainly not blind to them they were all there when this show uh originally aired it was given the death slot it was given like 10 p.m. on Friday night, and its ratings were a bit... Which, it, which uh, NBC. NBC. It had a cult following, because those of us who liked it really liked it. Well, I remember trying to t- tune in, I think, once, and I caught maybe a little bit of one episode. Mm-hmm. It's just, I didn't have a lot of time yeah, right then yeah. and there. I don't remember when, so 2014, um, I don't remember what was going on, but I probably just, you know, I, I, sure it wasn't fitting into the time slot for me to get caught up with it. Yeah. And the thing is, is now we're in a culture where people, you know, just watch the seasons live on stream, um, you know, on demand or, you know, buy it on iTunes or, or whatever they're going to do. But back in the day, people had TiVos, and they would mm-hmm. record something and watch it later. I had a DVR. Yeah, and there was some things like that. But in general, sort of watching on demand wasn't nearly as popular as it became as the years went on. So the idea that it was going to, or I, I should say, the studio didn't necessarily have it, the idea that, oh, okay, it's not being watched right now, but let's give it a month and see how many people have watched it then. It was much more, oh, there's not a ton of people watching. Plus, you know, unfortunately, when you are on one of the major networks, NBC, CBS, ABC, etc., mm-hmm. um, Fox as well, uh, at least before, before Disney bought them, Ad, they only make their money by charging a ton for advertising. And so you, you shows on those networks need to do much better than they do on other sh- on other channels. I, in fact, I remember at the time, I think they were pointing out that Constantine was doing better than some of those sci-fi shows. But those sci-fi shows were like the best ratings that sci-fi was getting. So they were thrilled when a show did that well. But for NBC... It was nothing compared to, you know, a reality TV show that would get, you know, five times the ratings. So they got rid of it. And we, we who really liked the show were really sad, you know, and, and the creators, I think, they tried to see what they could do with it and all the rest. But I will give NBC a lot of credit in that they let Warner Brothers basically buy back the rights. And that's how we got to see Constantine in the Arrowverse. I mean, it was not the only... I, you'd think that, you know, after Firefly had the uh, death slot long, long ago, yeah. and, not, and not even aired in order, and that was another one that, when it originally aired, I didn't see it right away. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, I saw it and loved it. Right. But it had that Friday night death slot. It's one of those things where you, I understand why... Networks want original programming because it's going to make them more money. But if you know any original programming you put at a given time is going to do so badly, you should... Ta- yeah, you know, why, why put it there? Yeah, I mean, or at the very least say, okay, we want a normal pro primetime program or 10 p.m. program to get, you know, 2 million, 2.5 million viewers. But on Friday night, we'll be happy with one. Because I think that's what Constantine was. It was like 1.5 million or something. But they weren't, and and that's too bad. But yeah, like you said, Constantine is a great character. Matt Ryan himself loved the character. And you could tell, because he would do Constantine in voice 
uh, you know, in the the animated things as well. And he'd he'd long since he'd gone back to Britain. He was on stage again. I remember. Uh, I don't remember what show it was, but they uh, went to England to to talk to him about about uh, playing Constantine in the Arrowverse before it was official. And of course, he's he's got his natural dark hair and everything, and his Welsh accent instead of English accent. But you could tell he was just really enthused about, he's like, I, I love the character. I'd love to go back and play the character. If they offer it to me, I will be there. And they did, and he was. And of course, it became such a fan favorite that it went from a guest appearance on the show Arrow to being a regular on Legends of Tomorrow. And you'd think that the tone would be completely different or that he wouldn't fit the tone because it's so different. Because Constantine was kind of like a suspense horror type of show and Legends of Tomorrow is action comedy. But his personality adds so much because it is a team of misfits. It's a team of people who don't fit in and all of whom are different. And he is absolutely a misfit. And it works perfectly. So, you glad we watched the show? Oh, yeah, of course. I am, too. I am. T- I hadn't seen it in, you know, since it aired five, six years ago. And it, it was fun to rewatch it. And it was fun to see Constantine sort of in his hard-boiled, really serious uh, environment. Now that I'm used to seeing him for a couple years now in his more absurd environment of Legends of Tomorrow. And he fits both. And that, and, that and goes to still, the writers and to still Matt this, Ryan. There's still this serious, dark tone with it. Yeah. But it still leaves the end of the series completely open. Right. And it would be interesting if somehow Legends of Tomorrow came in to kind of yeah, tie I, that one up or and something. The, and they are. I think that as time goes on, they're, they're allowed to do these things. Maybe there was like a, a certain number of years they had to wait because... Um, as we saw in the series, the, the, the setup for the series is that when, we, when it begins, we see him in an institution. And he institutionalized himself because he's just trying to forget that by trying to save the soul of a little girl named Astra, he inadvertently damned the soul. And so he feels incredibly responsible for an exorcism that went completely pear-shaped, and he's beating himself up for it. And this season, in Legends of Tomorrow, the big villain is Astra. They brought her back as an adult. So they were able to go back and use some of those characters. I'd love to see Chaz in Legends of Tomorrow and see just that relationship again, John and Chaz, how they could bring him in. Um, I don't know if they can or if they will, um, but I, I'd love to see them revisit that. And yeah, you, you touched on one of the great disappointments for those of us who loved Constantine was clearly they did not intend the series to end because the the finale was not a series finale. No. It was a season finale. It, and it you left were, the door wide open. Yeah, you were meant to pick up in the fall where we left off, you know. And some shows, we just finished uh, season three of The Expanse. And with that finale, they clearly wanted to leave it open. But also, they, they wrapped up yeah. the arc that had been going from seasons one to three. So... It was like, this can serve as a series finale if it has to, and it will be satisfying. But they also left it wide open for another season. They left the possibilities out there. Yeah, exactly. Whereas with Constantine, clearly they expected a second season. And they were like, okay, we're going to jump right back in. And then NBC was like, yeah, no, you're not. And so it's just really unsatisfying. It leaves this feeling like, oh, man, I really wish I could have seen it. Do you think they could go back to it? It's really interesting. I don't know. So much, I'm sure, is caught up in the exact contract and legal agreements between Warner Brothers and NBC. At this point, we take a slight moment to mourn the loss of Daredevil, Punisher, and all those other shows that also got caught in this little uh, 
you know, all the the corporate mess, all the corporate mess. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's one of those things where I've I, I've seen so many rumors um, that oh, they want to bring Daredevil back. Maybe not the maybe not the show, but they want to bring the character into another show or the movies or whatever. And obviously it can be done. They own the original IP, but there's been all kinds of things. Well, uh, maybe Netflix has a a deal where you can't use the characters for two years. Maybe they have to wait a certain amount of time or whatever. And NBC may have a very similar thing with Constantine, but clearly they had the rights to the character immediately because I believe it was only a couple years after the show that he was on Arrow. So it happened pretty quickly. Well, did they get permission? I mean, yeah. I remember originally we're sidetracking here for just a little bit when uh, John Cryer became Lex Luthor. You're like, right. oh yeah, they got him for one, just just or two episodes. Yeah, it that's three, it. It was three, was three episodes. episodes. Yeah. that's it. But he's such a good Lex Luthor. Exactly. And, and then now he's regular. So yeah. somehow. That also was able to play. Yeah, some of that has to do with the movies as well because uh, how do I say and this? And John Cryer is an excellent. Lips. Yeah, I'm, I'm because this to... is a guy who truly wants what's best for everyone. <laughs> yeah, and he's just doing it because he can make everyone's life better. Exactly. I'm trying to uh, be diplomatic about Jesse Eisenberg's uh, Lex Luthor. Um, he played what he had to work with. Yeah, I mean, he was he, given. A he was par- given. He was given. This. These are the tools that you have. These are the toys you have. Go play. Yeah, exactly. So he was given a part that he 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 was written a Lex Luthor that was not a Lex Luthor that I would ever have wanted to see on the screen, and he put on the screen what he was given. So not to not not to put him down as an individual or as a talent, but. I think at the time when the S- Supergirl writers were still were first coming up with how they wanted to use Lex Luthor, mm-hmm. I don't think they had officially said we're done with the DCEU version of Lex Luthor. But I believe that they have subsequently. I believe that they've basically said, okay, we're we're moving in a different direction now, officially. And so I think by by doing that, they were no longer holding him for the big screen. And that kind of, I think, freed up the characters to be used by the TV screen. Okay. But, you know, again, all I have to go on is rumor sites. And, you know, we're at the... I heard it from a friend who heard it from a friend who heard it from the, you know, grocer. So that's just what I read. But, you know, it is out there. So we'll, we'll, I, I do, and and like you said, I am very, very glad that they, they gave John Cryer an expanded role, because I think my, my favorite Lex Luthors are um, definitely Clancy Brown, who was the animated series Lex Luthor, and in many ways defined it for me. Um, Michael Rosenbaum in Smallville who, again, I think defined young Lex Luthor for me. Okay. And I'm going to put number three as John Cryer. I would put him in that category of amazing Lex Luthors. And it's not like Gene Hackman or Kevin Spacey oh, are bad actors. I love I just... Gene Hackman had... I mean, Gene Hackman was my first, like, Lex yeah, Luthor. Yeah, he's, you know... And I thought Kevin Spacey did an excellent job. I think everyone that's had the role has done... A great job with it. The only one I haven't really felt it is Jesse Eisenberg. Is Jesse Eisenberg? I don't think he felt it either. I think that was part of the problem as well. Um, the, speaking of other P, other great Lex Luthor's, recently in the DC animated universe, Lex Luthor has been played by Rain Wilson, who is another actor I very much like, and I think he gives Lex Luthor a very nice kind of sardonic quality, which. I think John Cryer does too. Um, as so, in that sense, I think both of their their Lexes are kind of compatible. I, I guess because I I'm seeing John Cryer doing it with his entire body, it resonates more with me. But I do like the Rain Wilson's animated voice of uh, of Lex Luthor as well. We have gone quite a bit off topic, but 
You know, the point is... What was our topic again? Exactly. So, Constantine. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, Constantine. It's a great show. You know, we're all at home So, we right went now. for a little bird walk. Exactly. We're, we're bird all... Bird walking. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We're, we're, all, uh, we're all at home now. There's lots of great content. You know, that is a strategy that students use mm-hmm. to keep the teacher from teaching. Because if you can get the teacher off task and talking about something else... Then that means she might not actually assign the work. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's how it goes. Well, um, we're not assigning anything, but if you find yourself wanting yeah, to... go watch things. Yeah, if you find yourself wanting to... Go uh, watch some of those things that you thought, oh, you know, I never got a chance to watch that. Take the opportunity right now if yeah. you're working from home and you can work and watch things at the same time. Do so. Yeah, absolutely. And Constantine's definitely... Worth the watch. I've got plenty on a list of different things. It's amazing. You know, you go to Netflix and you find something new to watch, even though there is a thousand things on your <laughs> add to list. <laughs> no, nah, I don't want to go look at my list. I'll just, uh, oh, hey, look, that one looks interesting. No, nah, not right now. I'll just add it to my list. Exactly. No matter how long the stay at home uh, shelter in place lasts, I, I bet that. All of our Netflix uh, List, cues but, are so yeah, long. Yeah, they, they will still be there. We'll never get through them all. Exactly. Well, thank you, Golden. You're welcome. And that's it for this episode. You can find the show notes at theomegabeam.com slash 73. If you like this episode, please leave a review in the Apple Podcasts app or wherever you listen to podcasts because it helps other people find our podcast. If you have any comments or suggestions, please drop us a line at info at the Omega Beam.com. Be good to yourselves and each other, and we'll catch you next time. Yeah.